Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Parish. We welcome our confirmation candidates, sponsors, and families as well. Today, we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We thank you for wearing masks, social distancing, and not singing. There are worship aids at the end of your row and online to aid in your prayer. Let us stand as we begin our prayer. Good evening. Good evening. My dear friends, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear friends, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. On our earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. 
When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands shall eat, you will be happy and prosper. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Your wife, like a fruitful vine, children like shoots of the olive around your table. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. In shall be blessed all those who fear the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep 
as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two and to a third, one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off, dug a hole in the ground, and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled account with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I've made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come and share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is, back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I do not plant and gather where I do not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have gotten it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But the one who has not, even what he has, will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. 
My dear friends, today we have the Religious Retirement Appeal uh, Talk. Um, today, we have in our midst one of us, a daughter of Kenton, who has used her talent in the service of God and humanity for years. She's going to speak to us this evening. Please, my dear friends, join me as I welcome Sister Mary Babic from the Congregation of Divine Spirit, the House of Loreto. Sister, welcome to our parish. Good evening. My name is Sister Mary Babick, and I am a sister of the Congregation of the Divine Spirit. Our mother house has been here in Canton for the past 10 years, and we have served the elderly here at the House of Loretto since 1962. We have taught in various schools, besides other ministries to the family. I am here to talk about the National Retirement Fund for Religious. First, I would like to commend you, the congregation. These are difficult times. I realize that it is not safe for some to come to Mass. However, you are the faithful who put God first in your life. Your week will be different because you started it with the Eucharist nourishment for your spiritual life. Well done, good and faithful servant. Welcome to the Confirmandi present today. You are preparing for a big step in your faith journey. Confirmation strengthens you and gives you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You become evangelizers, one who tells others about Jesus not only by your words, but by your actions. It is a difficult challenge to live Christ's values in our society. Your generation faces difficulties no other has. From all sides, you are told to get with it or lighten up. Temptations abound. Someone once said, if you were on trial for being a Christian, would there, would there be enough evidence to convict you? I saw a powerful example a few weeks ago during the confirmation process of our newest Supreme Court Justice, Amy Coney Barrett. It is quite public that she is a devout Catholic. It was recalled that in the questioning to become a federal judge, a prominent senator accusingly said to her, Read your speeches. The conclusion one draws is that the dogma, her Catholic faith, lives loudly in you. She was accused of living a Catholic Christian life, of following Jesus. What about you? Does your language, your dress, your sense of honesty, your stand on pro-life issues betray that you are a witness to Christ the Holy Spirit gives you the grace of the sacrament to strengthen you in your daily lives so that someday you will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Come share your master's joy. It's a great privilege for me to be here today. This is a homecoming for me. St. Michael's is my home parish. My three brothers, Bob, Rick, and Mark, and I attended St. Michael's School in grades one through eight and received an excellent education from the Sisters of Notre Dame. As a freshman at Central Catholic, I became a candy striper at the House of Loretto and met the Sisters of the Divine Spirit. I am sure you know of our home for senior citizens here in Canton 
and from the familiar faces in the congregation, I know our sisters have cared for many of your loved ones. A whole new world opened up to me. By the time I was a senior, I felt called to be a sister. The people in this area continue to reap the benefits of the hard work and dedication of religious sisters, brothers, and order priests over the past hundred years. There is Walsh University, founded by the Brothers of Christian Instruction, Mercy Hospital by the Sisters of St. Augustine, the House of Loretto by the Sisters of the Divine Spirit, St. Joseph Care Center by the Sisters of St. Joseph of St. Mark. There are two high schools and have been dozens of elementary schools staffed by the Sisters of Notre Dame, the Humility of Mary Sisters, Benedictines, and the Sisters of Charity. Some of you may have attended Maryvale Kindergarten, and there was St. John's Villa for Orphans. There was Bernardale Seminary run by the Precious Blood Fathers, and we have Santa Clara Monastery with the Poor Clares. Besides, there are other pastoral and refugee ministries. Today we remember those religious who taught us not only our ABCs, but to love God. Across the United States, hundreds of religious communities lack the financial resources to meet the retirement and health care needs of aging members. Historically, Catholic sisters, brothers, and order priests received small stipends that just met the needs of the day. As a result, hundreds of United States religious lack adequate retirement savings. Like many Americans, religious communities face the monumental task of funding elder care. We need you. Your generosity provides vital support for prescription medications, nursing care, and more. It also helps to ensure ongoing viability for religious communities so that younger members can continue the good works begun by their elders. Most importantly, please pray for God's blessing on all religious. Know that they are praying for you. Please give to them who have given a lifetime. Information on the Retirement Fund for Religious can be found in the ends of the pews. The collection is next weekend. Thank you, and God bless you. My dear candidates, we are gathered here this day to mark a significant part of your preparation for confirmation. All of us, sponsors, parents, confirmation team, and the parish community supports you as you continue your preparation for the sacrament of confirmation. With the candidates and their sponsors, please stand. Sponsors, please place your hand on your candidate's shoulder. I now ask our confirmation candidates to respond together, I will, to the following questions as a sign of your intentions at this time. Will you faithfully participate in this period of formation at liturgy, in your preparation sessions, and in the Christian service? 
Did you hear them? <laughs> I have to speak up. Will you listen to the gospel proclamation of Jesus with genuine openness of mind and heart? That sounds better. Will you journey with your sponsor and parents in a shared journey of faith and an honest search for truth? Will the parents please stand? And now address the sponsors and parents of these young people as I ask. Will you demonstrate the love and care of our entire community of faith for the candidates as you work with them on their journey of preparation? I will. Will you freely share with your candidate the fruits of your own journey of faith, its joys and difficulties, its gifts and its challenges? Will the community please stand? I now turn to you, the community of St. Michael the Archangel, and ask you, will you support these young people in their faith, prayer, and the example during the process of preparation leading to confirmation? Dear friends, trusting in the faithfulness of our almighty God, let us offer our prayers for ourselves and for the whole world. For religious sisters, brothers, and priests who serve our church, and for those who are now retired, that they may know the joy promised to good and faithful servants, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For recently elected leaders and public authorities, that the faith and hope entrusted in their leadership be answered with honesty, integrity, and justice for all, we pray. Lord, hear prayer. For those living in darkness and for those seeking peace and security, that they may find comfort and guidance in God's light and love. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish and for our confirmation candidates, that we may faithfully use our gifts and talents to build the reign of God here on earth. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of our community who are sick, homebound, or living in nursing homes, and for all struggling with COVID 19 that they may be embraced by the healing power and comfort of our loving God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and for those who mourn, for Marie Peters and for Lillian Sibylla, who we remember during this Mass, and that lives lived in discipleship be rewarded with the joys of heaven, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And now invite all present to stretch your, their hands towards the confirmation candidates as I pray. All loving God, bless and help these candidates as they deepen their knowledge of the gospel of Christ. May they come to know and to love you and always do your will with generous hearts and willing spirits. Initiate them into the life of holiness and count them among your church so that they may share your holy mysteries here on earth and in, in the everlasting joy of heaven. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this juncture, uh, I now invite the sponsors to pin your candidates with the cross giving your place.
At your baptism, the sign of the cross was stressed on your forehead. As the following words are said, would each sponsor now place the sign of the cross on the forehead of your candidate? May our loving God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Amen. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you, and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that duty and that salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. My voice is, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalt and praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, though this is a memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have fed us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, all the bishops and clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Throw him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My dear friends, at the Savior's command, I'm formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, Apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your way, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
My dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that I should enter under my roof, but I may say the word, and so shall it be. Instead of a communion procession, the ministers will bring communion to you in the pews. We are asking all who are receiving to receive in the hand for now. As one community, let us pray the Anima Christi found on your worship aid. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And close to you, bid me. That with your saints, I may be praising you forever. Amen.
we have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly employing, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Our Social Justice Speaker Series continues this Wednesday at 7 o'clock via a Zoom meeting with our very own Dr. Susan Hake. The topic is physical health and wellness. Email jeff at stmichaelcanton.org for an invitation to the Zoom meeting. This week as you are doing your Thanksgiving Day grocery shopping, please pick up an extra item or two or three for the food drive. We give thanks for you who continue to support our year-round food drive. You can drop off your non-perishable food items on the lower level of the church all week long or bring it to you, with you to church next weekend. We want to thank you in advance for your prayerfully considering the needs of our religious sisters, brothers, and priests who have faithfully served our church. Next weekend is our second collection for our retirement needs. You can return your contribution using the flyer in the pews, our parishioner envelopes, or by giving on our parish website. Speaking of our parish website, we will soon be enabling all parishioners with a way to log in to our parish website. This can be used for online giving and also to connect to parish ministries. Please be patient as we roll out this feature. And if you are having any difficulty with this online giving, please contact Bruce Gordon in the parish office. Please be patient as our ushers dismiss you by row to help with social distancing. Once again, we thank Sister Mary Babic for coming to speak to us. Thank you, Sister. Um, I want also to thank in a special way the young people you see that are now taking care of our cameras. We have Christian, Christian and Eli for today. Um, these young people stepped up and they said, Father Benson, you are too old to do this. <laughs> we can do it for you. So I'm so proud of them. Thank you, Eli and uh, Kristen. Uh, I had no idea that Dick and Phil has been training for Olympics the speed with which he ran out and came back with wine and water showed me that he can do well in Olympics. So Dick and Phil, you have to thank you so much for, for covering my back. <laughs> and most importantly, this time is a time a lot of people, instead of having the joy of Thanksgiving and the Christmas season, it brings sorrow and pain to them and in their lives. Last Monday or Tuesday, those who came to Money Mass saw the drama that happened. A young lady walked in, was crying. At the end of Mass, I invited her. She left, however, I asked somebody to go and call her. She came. I asked her, what is going on in your life? Do you know what she said? Thank you for noticing. Thank you for noticing. That really touched me. There are people in your neighborhood around you who want you to notice that they are in pain. They are suffering. Joy and happiness of this time, with everything going on, breaks their heart or whatever they have gone through in their lives. Maybe somebody died my dear friends, I invite you to reach out to them. Call them on the phone. Ask each other, how are you doing? We are sisters and brothers. Let us look out for one another. And if you know somebody who has need for food for Thanksgiving, or this time around, please call the office. 
If not, call me and leave a message for me that this person needs help. Let us show that brotherly love, which we are doing wonderfully well in our parish community. But I am asking you to seek them out. That young lady would have gone. And then she would think nobody cares, but that calling her back made a big difference. She cried and then poured out her soul and heart to me. So I invite you, please, look around your neighborhood. In your place of work, there are people that were hurting. Maybe something going on in their lives. You may be the voice of Christ they need to hear. Have I given you blessings? No. No? Okay. You are confusing me, Dick and Phil. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks.